Hi, my name is Ashish Shinde. I am a student at University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, my project is to detect whether a person is running or walking using machine learning in Python. Uh, as we all know that uh, smartphones which are almost available to everybody are now offering many other features such as multitasking and deployment of variety of sensors due to which it has become easy to keep track of our activities, learn them and help in making better decisions regarding future actions. Uh, this dataset was available in Kaggle. In this project, the data produced by accelerometer and gyroscope will be used to detect human activity that is run on walk. For this project, I have used two approaches, machine learning and deep learning. I have done this project in Python, that is in Jupyter Notebook. So, this is my uh, Python code where I imported all the modules required for this uh, project, such as uh, Pandas, which is a popular tool for used for adding and updating data frame, uh, TensorFlow, which is used for deep learning. Uh, and a uh, scale learn which is used for machine learning tool. I loaded the CSV file using pd.readcelsv. This is my data frame which has 11 features uh, that is date, time, username, wrist activity, acceleration, xyz, and gyroscope xyz. <coughs> this gives the type, data type of uh, all the features. Uh, that is uh, date time username where object uh, rest activity are uh, integers and rest all where float uh, our df has uh, 88588 number of observation and 11 columns dot describes uh, describes the data frame uh, features of the data frame uh, you can see that acceleration xyz and gyroscope xyz the range range doesn't vary and they are of they are of same units therefore uh, scaling is not required uh, this x the none value uh, and so uh, all the values are zero therefore there is no none values uh, zero is for walk and one is for run uh, here we can see that the count of both run and walk are nearly equal therefore there is no need of sampling uh, this is plot, bar plot of the wrist where uh, 0 is for uh, left wrist and 1 is for right wrist. Here we can see that the count of both left and right wrist is slightly larger but that is not an issue. So there is no need of sampling. Since we have samples from both left and right wrist, uh, I explored data, I explored distribution of numeric data separately for both wrists. Both wrists. Uh, so this loops from all the variables in the sensor data column and plot a distribution plot of left and right wrist of that variable. Uh, this is a distribution plot uh, where blue is a uh, left wrist and green is right wrist of all the features acceleration xyz and gyro xyz mm. by this we can conclude that the data presented doesn't suffer from skewing and normally distributed and is normally distributed now let's start let's go for machine learning approach uh, where i removed uh, username date time wrist and also activity uh, and this is the features and data uh, data frame of the features uh, i perform one not encoding using uh, pd dot factorize uh, for our label uh, so x is the features and y is a label uh, before performing PCA, we need to scalar data, which is used, uh, which is done with the help of uh, scalar dot fit transform. Uh, so this function CF is equal to PCA of variance, where we need to enter a value of variance we want to retain, and as I have written maximum variance, and that is 99%, uh, it gives uh, the number of components as 6 
therefore no use of PC up for this data as it gives all the components. Then I split I split the data using test chain split uh, with uh, 30 percent of validation size and 70 percent of training size. And then perform the key nearest neighbor. Uh, here I have used uh, uh, default parameter for k that is k is equal to one, which is of sklearn. Then uh, fit the x ten y ten. Then predict the response of vx text. Calculate the validation accuracy by predicted label and actual label. Mm, so this is the accuracy that is 98.4 percent. Precision was 99 percent. Recall was 97 uh, percent. Same was done for the logistic regression, where I've used default parameters of SKLN, uh, and it gives accuracy of 85 percent. Uh, for support vector machine, I have performed grid search method, where we need to give our uh, which type of uh, kernel to use and their parameters. Uh, after performing grid search method, I got best kernel uh, as Redel kernel, best gamma as 0.01, best C as 10. Uh, so by putting those parameters and performing uh, uh, SVM, I got an accuracy of uh, 96%. Again, random forest, I have used default parameters uh, where scale and got an accuracy of 98%. Now a base. Uh, got an accuracy of 95 percent. Uh, so far, uh, we uh, I have highest accuracy of 98 percent, 98.6 percent for uh, random forest. Uh, this was a uh, deep learning. Uh, this was a machine learning approach. Now I will move towards uh, de uh, deep learning approach. <coughs> uh, so this function. Uh, plots the activity with respect to their features. Uh, zero is for walking and one is for running. Uh, so this plots shows the observation on y axis against equally spaced time interval on x axis. By this plots we can easily distinguish between the activities running or walking. So this data can be used to train LSTM model. I wanted to make fixed length sequences of train data. Uh, n time steps were 200, n features were uh, 6, uh, and number of features were 6, and step was 20. Then created an empty list has segment and labels. Uh, loop form 0 to difference between length of data frame and 200 fixed sequences. A step of 20. Now each generated sequence contains 200 uh, training examples. Uh, here stars dot mode returns an array of the model value in the past array. <coughs> this was the original uh, shape of the data frame that is 8858 which uh, is now transformed to 4420 and this transformed uh, uh, this transform shape is again reset uh, to again reset and one not encoding was performed using uh, pd dot get dummies for our label. Again, x uh, and y was split splitted into test and train uh, uh, with, with the test size of 0.2. Then I have used number of uh, like we I have number of classes of two and I've used number of classes uh, number of hidden units are sixty-four. Uh this are X and Y are the graph inputs, X containing the shape of uh, two hundred uh, by six uh, and in Y I am passing uh, digit number of classes. <coughs> Now I define an LSTM model. Uh, this is input weights and these are the biases. 
uh, now for the RNN I need to convert each row of data into single chunk therefore uh, I need to convert each row to an array uh, so this is done by uh, this transpose uh, so this swaps the zero dimension to first dimension uh, this Uh, this reshape removes one pair of extra braces and flattens by one dimension and I have used uh, activation function as relu that is rectified linear units uh, here I split the entire thing into n time step uh, then I have looked for uh, two LSTM cells creating uh, two LSTM layers stacked on each other every cells have output uh, at each recurrence. Uh, finally, I return a matrix multiplication of final output times the weight times the biases. Uh, I have used the softmax function which squishes between 0 and 1 since it is a binary classification. Uh, here I made a use of VL2 regularization which is noted as a loss of LSTM. I have used the Adams optimizer uh, to minimize that loss. Mm. Uh, number of epochs were 60. A bash size was 1024. Uh, <coughs> History is an empty dictionary which has training uh, loss, testing loss, training accuracy, testing accuracy. Search dot run initialize uh, initializes the all the variables. Uh, this loops from zero to uh, from one to sixty epochs. Uh, then runs the optimizer, which minimizes the loss, stores the value of test train accuracy, test train loss, and append it to the dict of the history uh, here. And this continues for the loop of uh, 1 to 60 uh, and at last we get the final accuracy of 99.6% uh, uh, plot was plotted uh, uh, epoch versus test train plot was plotted uh, here we can see that the test accuracy goes on increase and decrease and becomes constant at uh, training up of greater than 30 uh, and we can see that the uh, at 20 second epoch the test accuracy was maximum using and uh, using epoch of 22 I again trained the model LST model and got the accuracy of 99.8 percent which was uh, greater than the previous accuracy and again plotted the model we can see that the maximum accuracy is 99.8% uh, and plotted epoch versus test trend loss as a uh, epoch increases test trend loss decreases uh, precision was maximum that is one recall was 99.97 uh, there was only one uh, misclassification and finally uh, these are my results where uh, LSTM model was uh, pretty good compared to other models which has a maximum accuracy of 99.8% uh, and precision of 1 and recall of 99.7% which is uh, far more better than other models. So uh, yeah, I'm done. Thank you.